Today, I'm pushing the DF robot C4001 MMBF sensor to its absolute limits. Can it detect through walls, boxes, glass, or even under a ceiling fan? Let's find out. I personally found the DF robot C4001 MMWave human presence sensor quite impressive because it supports I2C and UART communication methods and is compatible with Arduino, ESP32, ESP8266 and Raspberry Pi development boards. And that's not all, it has a human presence detection range of 8 meters and a motion detection and range and range of 12 meters. We will use the C4001 MMWave sensor with both Arduino and ESP32. We will cover a total of four examples. Monitoring speed and velocity using a filter to stabilize the values. Implementing it for home automation and monitoring the sensor using the Blink application. So without any further delay, let's get started. The commonly used installation methods for this module include top installation, bottom installation, horizontal installation, and downward tilted installation. The C4001 MMWave presence sensor uses FMCW modulation to measure both distance and speed. It can detect objects up to 12 meters away and track motion speeds ranging from 0.1 to 10 meters per second. The C4001 mm wave human presence sensor operates on a 3.3 volt or 5 volt power supply, making it compatible with various microcontrollers. Plus is the power, minus is the ground, CR is I2C clock line or RX and DT is the I2C data line or TX. It comes with a Gravity 4P I2C and UART sensor connector. It features a switch labeled I2C and UART, allowing me to toggle between I2C and UART communication based on my setup. Right next to it, there is another switch for selecting the I2C address 0x2A or 0x2B which is useful when using multiple sensors on the same I2C bus. Right now, I have set it to I2C mode. The advantage of this is that I don't have to change the pins in the code for Arduino or ESP32. But if I select UART communication, I would have to change the pins every time. So I will use I2C communication. And let me tell you, all the programs I'm going to share with you will work on both Arduino and ESP32 without any changes. Connect the red and black wires to the Arduino 5 volt and ground. Connect the blue wire to the Arduino A5 and the other wire to A4 pin on the Arduino. A4 is the SDA and A5 is the SCL. The 5 volt buzzer is connected to the Arduino digital pin 8 for the connections you can follow this circuit diagram. Right now, I can't permanently fix the C4001 MMWave sensor because I need to perform multiple tests on it. So that's why I temporarily attached it to a mobile stand using double tape. And let me tell you, it should be at least 1.5 meters above the floor. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. First, you need to install the DF robot underscore C4001 library. To do this, go to the products wiki page and download the library from there. I have already downloaded it. Next, go to the sketch menu, then to include library and click a.zip library. Finally, select the folder and then click the open button. As you can see, I have already installed this library, so I'm going to click the no button. I downloaded this code from DF Robots wiki page. You can also find the code for UART communication on the same page. At first glance, this code might look a bit confusing, but it's actually not that complicated. Once you read through it, you will understand it better. In the next examples, I have simplified the code significantly. Look at the screen, target number, target speed, target range, and target energy all updating in real time. When I move towards the MMWave sensor, the target speed value shows a negative sign, but the moment I move away, the negative sign disappears. From the target range value, you can already tell how accurate this sensor is. And here's the real game changer, the target energy. The more I move, the higher this value goes. You might have noticed that the values were fluctuating a lot. So this time we'll use a filter to make the value more stable. And along with that, we will also use a timer. We will also define the range to check how accurate the sensor is. So let's take a look at the programming. As you can see, I have simplified the code. The buzzer is connected to digital pin 8. I've also defined a 600 milliseconds delay, meaning the buzzer will only turn off when no human is detected for 600 milliseconds. 
For now, you can see that I have set the minimum distance to 30 centimeters and the maximum distance to 1200 centimeters. The threshold value is set to 10. Additionally, I have used a filter to stabilize the target range value. For controlling the buzzer, I have applied this condition. The buzzer will only turn on if the person's distance is between 0.4 and 5 meters. Otherwise, the buzzer will remain off. As you can see, I have used a timer. So the buzzer will turn off only when there is no detection for 600 milliseconds. I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the C4001 mm wave sensor in action. Right now, I'm outside the room and as you can see, the buzzer is off. Now, I'm about to enter the room. Let's see if the buzzer turns on or not. Amazing! We have successfully used the C4001 mm wave sensor to turn the buzzer on. This in itself works as a security system. As soon as someone enters the room, the buzzer turns on. The buzzer will remain on as long as I stay within the defined range. By using the same code, you can also control lights. In a little while, we will also test it with a light. Anyway, as you can see, I have been in this area for quite some time and the buzzer is still on. Now, as soon as I leave this area, the buzzer will turn off. Now, let's try a different range. I've set the maximum detection range to 300 centimeters and also set the target range to 3 meters. As you can see, we have easily limited the sensor's detection range as per our preference. Similarly, you can also set your own custom range as needed. In the next two examples, we will be using the ESP32. So now it's your choice whether you want to use an Arduino or the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. Connect the red and black wires of the C4001 mm wave sensor to the ESP32's 3.3 volt and ground pins. Connect the blue wire to GPIO22 and the other wire to GPIO21. The 5 volt SPT type relay is connected to the GPIO13. For the relay connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. The relay is connected to GPIO13. To further eliminate fluctuations, this time I'm using two timers. We could still use the previous code, but this is another approach where we can control the on time and adjust the scan time. Everything else is almost the same. The main purpose of this example is to demonstrate how to use the C4001 MMBF sensor with the ESP32 and show you how to control a light. This time, you can see that the relay didn't turn on instantly. First, the C4001 MMBF sensor detected my presence for a few seconds and only then did it turn the relay on. Now, the light will remain on as long as I stay in this area. When I leave the area, the C4001 MMBF sensor will scan the area for a few seconds and if no movement is detected, it will turn the light off. Next, we will use the C4001 MMWF sensor with the Blink application. With Blink, we can monitor the C4001 sensor from anywhere in the world. In my previous video, I set up Blink for a tilt sensor and I'll be using the same application for this project. As you can see, I have named the device C4001 MMWF. If I go to data streams, you will see that I'm using the same virtual pin V0, but this time I have changed its data type to double. That's it. If you still find it difficult, I recommend watching my previous video on the 360 degree tilt sensor. If I open the ESP32 code, you will see that I'm using the same template name, ID and authorization token. I've also included a watchdog timer so you won't need to manually restart the ESP32 if it freezes. The rest of the code is simple and straightforward. And if you're using ESP32 and Blink for the first time, I highly recommend watching my getting started video on ESP32 and Blink v2.0. With the Blink application, I can now monitor the C4001 mmwave sensor in real time from anywhere in the world. 
you can build a highly reliable security system that you can monitor from your smartphone and if you have a paid plan you can even generate alert messages by now you should have a good idea of how easily the c4001 mmbf sensor can be used with arduino and esp32 now we are going to perform some tests and after that you can decide for yourself whether you should use the c4001 mmbf sensor or not first i'm going to start with this cardboard box and then we will gradually increase the complexity so let's place the c4001 mmbf sensor inside the box and see if it can detect me it detected me so easily from inside the box let's put another box in front of it one more box how about we add another one this is crazy Finally, this giant box. Inside this box, there is a dinner set. Let's see if the C4001 can still detect me through all these five boxes. It's not detecting me because I have moved the sensor from the edge to the center of the table. The range has reduced likely because there is a lot of stuff inside the box. When I'm close to the table, it detects me perfectly. But as I step back, the C4001 can't detect me anymore. The first test was super impressive. Next up, we are taking the challenge to the next level, testing it with this hardboard sheet. The sensor is facing downward and the real question is, can it detect my foot movement through the board? This could be a game changer for hidden security and smart automation. Let's find out. Can the C4001 MMVF sensor detect me through glass? This could be a game changer for security systems in shops and offices. But here's the real challenge. I haven't placed it directly against the glass. I left some distance to truly push its limits. Will it pass or fail? Let's find out. This time I have placed a plastic case in front of the MMWave sensor. I'm sure it won't have any trouble penetrating it and detecting my presence. Can this MMWave sensor see through a curtain? There is quite a distance between the sensor and the curtain. So let's put the C4001 MMWave sensor to the test. Will it detect me when I'm completely hidden? Just imagine, a sensor so powerful that it can detect movement without even seeing you. This could change the game for security systems, smart automation and even futuristic tech. Let's find out. This is absolutely mind-blowing. This tiny sensor just proved it can detect movement through fabric. Imagine the possibilities, security systems, hidden monitoring and more. What would you use this for? Let me know in the comments. Can the C4001 MMWF sensor penetrate this door and still detect me on the other side? If it detects me, I'll be seriously impressed. As you can see, the sensor is quite far from the door. The real question is, can it still penetrate through and detect me on the other side? Let's find out. The C4001 MMWF sensor just shocked me. Even from a distance, it successfully detected my presence through the door. Now, imagine the possibilities. You can detect if someone is standing outside your room, create a contact list, doorbell, or even build a completely invisible security system. Can this MMWave sensor survive under a ceiling fan? Many people complain that MMWave sensors struggle under direct airflow. So let's put that to the test. The C4001 MMWave sensor is right under a running ceiling fan. The airflow is strong and if this sensor is truly reliable, it should still detect me without false triggers. So what's going to happen? Will it detect me accurately or will the airflow confuse it? Let's find out. Drop your predictions in the comments before we begin. Do you think this sensor can handle it or will it fail?
The fan is running at full speed and I'm standing outside the sensor's range. The buzzer has been off for the last three minutes. No false triggering at all. But now comes the real challenge. I'm about to step closer to the C4001 MMVF sensor. Will it detect me accurately despite the strong airflow? Or will it fail like most other MMVF sensors? Let's find out. This is unbelievable. Most MMVF sensors struggle under direct air contact, but the C4001 is rock solid. The sensor is on a whole new level. The ultimate challenge, human detection behind a wall. I'm going to step behind this wall. Let's see if the C4001 MMVF sensor can still detect me. Will it pass or will it fail like many other sensors? What's your guess? Let me know in the comment. It's not detecting me. So, here's the reality. The C4001 MMVF sensor works great through most of the materials, but it struggles with solid walls. This is something you should definitely keep in mind when using it for security applications. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode. And thanks for watching.